but soon he will learn manners. I will torture his body so that his soul learns to be humble. Okay, he, he know we just talking here, right? I mean, we just, we just getting people interested in- Cage against the machine. Yo, we are live. Uh, we are Cage Against the Machine, Round Zero, The People's Choice, your place for MMA, for the non-bro, martial arts and wellness, urban culture, marble heads, hip hop, and all the funny things in between. A little bit of entrepreneurship, a couple of announcements. I am the sweet MBA. I am joined by my co-host, Brain. As usual, we are produced and created and curated by the great uh, Dream Ear Productions. You may notice we're only a crew of two. Unfortunately, our uh, member, J.K. Atkins, good doctor, is having a bit of health issues, couldn't make it. So, um, love to you. I hope you get well. We hope get well we see soon, you. Brother. Uh, we're going to recruit some other members out the, 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 the squad to, to swap into the Avengers as we do. Um, a lot of announcements, some cool things. You may notice a little bit of a new layout. Um, yeah, I'm not really trying to be a capitalist, but I see so many people putting trash out. Go out and buy my book. Buy my book. It's better than that other trash. I'm not going to name that other trash. Buy my book. Why? Because I predicted it first, 2013. Thank you very much. Anyways, um, what else can we talk about in the world of MMA? Uh, we are working on an amazing block party with our special, wonderful sponsors, uh, Seawolf. It's been a dream of ours for a while. Did I tell you about this? No. Yeah. Remember how we were always talking about uh, we want to put a screen outside? And yeah. Have a, uh, so we were at the Holloway Uh-oh. fight, and I'll come back to this, and the owners of Seawolf come over to me, and they're like, hey, what would you think about putting a screen outside? And I was like, yes. <laughs> right, right. We thought we had to pay for this <laughs> ourselves. So that's exciting. We're looking forward to that. Probably do it around the Adesanya and Whitaker fight. I think that would be amazing. Oh, nice. And we might bring in the homies, uh, Lay Brothers de Diaz. Have him do an autograph signing. So that's cool. That's dope. Um, so, bit of a recap. We just left uh, UFC 240, which is Max Holloway versus Frankie Edgar. Great fight. What is next for Max Holloway? Man, I, I don't know if it's... Uh... Might be Zabit. I know Zabit just got signed to do a fight soon. Uh, yeah, yeah. Zabit's fighting. I don't remember who they they, they just signed him up. It's uh, what's his name? Um, oh, it's on the tip is of my it Stevens? tongue. Stevens, Jeremy Stevens, right? No, Stevens is fighting uh Yair. Okay. In okay. Mexico, which is yeah. great. Um, but he's fighting. I think Zabit is fighting. Uh, what's his name? Calvin Qatar. Yeah, Qatar. That kid hits hard. Which makes me believe that probably Volkanovski is next. Oh, that's who I'm forgetting. Yes. Yeah. Volk- Volkanovski has definitely earned his shot. I Either think. that or Josh Emmett, right? Or maybe we see right. Volkanovski versus Josh Emmett. Could be, depending on how healthy Max is. Yeah, because Max is going to have a little seat for a while. And meanwhile, you know, great shout out to Frankie Edgar. Um, but the news, I couldn't be happier about him moving down to 135 is exactly yeah. what that, that division needed. Right. Um, shake it up a little bit. It's very good. Uh, we also have some other announcements. Pennington versus Home. Very good. Um, I, think, I think Pennington got a real shot at beating Holly Home. Yeah, because she can just uh, walk through the, 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 the volume and do something and frustrate her. Yeah. Um, and Pennington, you know, she's all hard. Yeah. She yeah. puts it all on the line every Especially time. Especially the fight we saw against uh, Amanda, right? Yep. Um, and then I have the answer to your question. You said, yo, who is supposed to fight Gadea? It's Cavillo. Yeah, Cynthia that's, Cavillo. That's gonna be a good one. Yeah, especially with uh, seeing Gadea over at um, f- training with Mark Henry and that whole and being under Frank yeah. Frank Edgar. That's I forgot very about that. Um, couple announcements. Uh, if you're a fan of fights and you saw the fight last week of Colby Covington versus um, Robbie, Robbie Lawler. Lawler, that was really sad to see Robbie Lawler. But you gotta appreciate. Covington for fighting exactly the fight he was supposed to fight against him. It looked like RD, what RDA did to him. Right. And, um, and no matter how much I don't like that guy, you mm-hmm. you got to respect that pace that he puts up. It's straight just up. nonstop. It might straight not up. be 100% every punch, but it just 
doop, 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 it works. Doop, 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 I mean, he's take down. Doop, 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 he's Chael Sonnen 2.0, but he is who right. he is, right? Like he's not faking. I don't know why y'all keep thinking this dude is not. He's a good guy or something. Well, I think he is landed on thick, aka Chael, but there's definitely pos in him. Oh yeah, you no, know he's, I mean? he's a full, fully cooked, fully baked pos. Um, and uh, the sooner people get hip to that. I mean, his comment about Matt Hughes, right? Right. I mean, that is just uncalled for. Be yeah. a heel all you want. But There's he no is that guy. Just, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You know what he mean? is that guy. He's not faking. He is that guy. So right, right. now that people are seeing that. Um, so that's some, some current events. So but what do you think about him and Usman? you think that's a good matchup? I think they're the same fighter. Right. I think it's they're just the same one is fighter. faster and one is more powerful. Right. They're both cringeworthy when they talk. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that tweet, Ben Askren? <laughs> but who is he to talk? Right, but he was like, sorry I lost. Now y'all stuck with that, with the talk, the, the cringy trash he... talk between those two. Yeah, but he wasn't going to get a title shot if he won either. Right, exactly. I just still thought it was funny. Yeah. I mean, especially if, as Masvidal, the way he destroyed him in, in you know, yeah. record time. And yeah. even five seconds of breaking the record, it was really like two seconds. I mean, so and I guess that, that makes Dana's like, he ain't getting no title shot. Right. Do you think he's going to get a... I mean, do you think Masvidal gets it? No, he. Dana yeah. clearly said he's not. And yeah. I mean, really, you have to make that Covington-Usman matchup. And you have to if make Masvidal, Masvidal and wants Bridge. I feel like one more. You have to Just see the Leon more. fight. You have to see Right. Three pieces in the soda, right? Which is so ironic, right? It's just so ironic. Just a, a Cuban <laughs> fighting a Nigerian from... From England. <laughs> Do you know how much KFC is across the world? <laughs> Remember that, Double D? Remember being in New Zealand? Oh, yeah. People like you. They're like, yeah, I'll take you to KFC. I'm like, hey. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> no. Hard pass. No. No, a hey, 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 pause. By the way, hard pause. <laughs> um, uh, no, I'm not going to KFC. You know, in New Zealand, you can rent a room in McDonald's to have a meeting. In McDonald's? <laughs> yeah. So, wait. And so, the way you're saying this, there are multiple of these rooms in McDonald's. There's two of them. There's two of them. Me and Deshaun was jo- joking. Mick co-working. We was clowning <laughs> all month. Mick co-working. Mick incubator. <laughs> Mick CEO. Mick CEO. <laughs> Mick staff meeting. It's crazy. Uh, what are some fights that you're excited about on the early pre? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I got overexcited. Other announcement. If I can get him to get here, I think we're going to grab my good friend, uh, Adisa, to come in here and, and talk some. some hey, that was fun when he was here. Yeah, he's crazy. He's crazy. I love that. But also because. <laughs> I, I happened to say this at work today when I was, they were like, oh, you're with a new team. I was like, yeah, they're crazy. I fit in with crazy well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He gets Hence his, the name brain damage. He gets his. his uh, he gets his his jujitsu in and that'll be great. We have a striker, we have jujitsu, and then, you know, we have brain who just enjoys watching the fights. Um, <laughs> I will bear hug the ish out of you though. Yeah. Should, should we even talk about the Marvel announcement or we're just going to pass over that? No, let's talk Marvel announcements. You really want to. Okay. That's ready. Uh, did you guys hear about phase four? Did you guys ready for phase four? Did you, did you see what's coming? A little bit, a little bit. Awesome. I've seen all the announcements, but, uh, yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen any trailers ever since uh, Far you, From Home. Okay, and you understand what's happening? So now the new one in January 1st, you're going to get, instead of, remember how Age of Ultra, or Age of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. used to set up each movie? Yeah. So now we're going to get a multi, a little mini series. So you get two hour movies, like six to ten episodes of a show, and they set up each movie. And, but did they name what the show is? Yes. Yeah, so the first one is Captain America, colon, Winter Soldier, and Falcon. So they're both going to be Captain America? Just like or? the comics. They're literally, that whole crew is called Captain America. And really, the, it's, it's really, it's Falcon wearing Captain America's suit and flying and Winter Soldier having the shield and the arm. And they go around fighting Hydra in the United States. And it's Baron Nemo gets out of jail and he starts recruiting white nationalists and rebuilding Hydra. Mm. And that will, so, that will set up Black Widow. So what I was wondering, though, is like, I get it. Winter Soldier, he has the same serum as Steve and, and mm, those, you know, that yeah. extra strength and durability. He but doesn't Falcon have, is just a he savage. He actually so, have the serum. But He's, he has something. 
he was experimented on by Hydra yeah. and he's got an arm, but he's not a super soldier, which is why Steve could actually whip him. But he, he could take damage more than a regular human. Yes, yes, yes. So, but Falcon is just a dude that came out of the military, Air Force, right? Yes. That's why he's a flyer? Yes. So, does the suit give him any extra protection? Or, like, why wouldn't he have the shield if Winter Soldier already has Cause the he, arm? Because, I mean, flying with the shield, it's like... Yeah, if you fall out, you gotta hold it down and you get to just land on it. He's already got his wings, bro. But that's what I'm saying. If You know how, uh, who, who disabled him and he was falling? Was it Ultron? No, it was, um... That was you mean in Civil War? I think so. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, what's his name? No, and it wasn't even him. Rhodey got disabled. He was fine. Remember, Rhodey shot. He sh remember they shot at him, and he he used his wings and got out of the way, and it hit mm -hmm. Rhodey, and Rhodey fell and got disabled. I saw this war Falcon fell once too. Like he got one wing shot off, and he kind of had a. I don't know. I could just be misthinking it. Either way. Either way. So that's that one. And then the next one that sets it up, that sets up kind of two movies, is they're going to have something called WandaVision, where Scarlet Witch goes back in time to the 50s and tries to bring back Vision. But well, why in the 50s? A uh, bit of a plot. That's a bit of a, a spoiler. Okay. Okay. We'll talk about that off cam. Yeah, it's a bit of a spoiler. I don't know if I want to be that spoiler. Yeah, no, no. I don't, nah, nah, I don't nah, want to call nah, Sweet the Spoiler right. King. Right. So, and you said it sets up Black Widow. So, are they doing an origin story? Because uh... So, Black Widow will happen right between Infinity War and Civil War. So, it's about her, about why her hair is blonde and why she's in disguise. And her and her sister, known as Budapest. Right? Uh-huh. Hence, this reminds me of Budapest. You and I remember Budapest very differently. <laughs> it's her, her in Eastern Europe basically dealing with the... Do you remember in, did you ever watch Agent Carter? Yeah, but it remember was... Remember Leviathan? They're basically like the Hydra shield of Russia. Yeah. It's her going against them and, the, them, and the Taskmasters basically setting up a whole crew in Eastern Europe. Oh, nice. Yeah. So a lot of like secret government, deep state stuff. Think, uh, it would be, I mean, it's Black Widow, right? So it's basically a born identity movie yeah, like with women, spy. right? And then... The WandaVision thing will basically be a play off of the House of M, which in the 50s will kind of like, by her going back to the quantum realm using her magic, it will kind of set up the mutants. And then that will feed into the movie she's going to be in, which is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Nice. So she'll be... That sounds... So her and Wong nice. will be part of his crew, and then they'll be going up against Nightmare and Mordo and all that crew. Which, my prediction, this is a prediction show... The way that y'all loved Loki for five years, you know how he was the villain y'all loved? And then you met Killmonger and you're like, yo, this is the villain I love? Mordo will be that villain for the next five years. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mordo will I be the villain. I could already see it in Doctor Strange. Yeah, yeah. He will be the villain you relate to. And you'll be like, oh, that's my dude. But I never, I never, I never messed with Loki like that, though. But, but who didn't could... love Lo Loki, though? They, people are always, that's why he's in all the movies. Uh, I mean, aside from the plot, that people so, love his sense of humor. We can put it to rest, that whole Hulk, Loki. Yeah, that's done. Uh, yeah. That's so. done. That's done. <laughs> I never believed in that one. I was like, right. that didn't make, it but makes we did, no but, sense. But they are, no it's sense. half right, because Loki is not dead, because as we saw, he used the Tesseract. Did you catch that? No, I didn't. So, Wait, what? in Endgame, when, remember when Hulk busts through the elevator? Yeah. He grabs the Tesseract and is like, peace. Right. But that, that, I just thought that was how he always got it in, from Jump. No, he never had it. How did he get it in the first Avengers? He used his he used his wand, his as guardian magic, and he used the crew, which we now know is the Black Order. Because remember, he was part of he got found by Thanos in space. Yeah, and he basically was talking to and mind controlling. What, what was those Chitari, right? The Chitari and the whole Black Order, right? Yeah, because that's the whole thing with Thanos. He's like, I don't have to come to the planet. I'll just have Loki take it over and destroy it. Oh, so he had the staff, and when he teleported there, and that's when he, he was control, touched, he was doing, controlling he was, got Hawkeye mind. and the scientists. Right. He was already controlling. The right there. Oh, even early on, he was controlling the, the mind. But that's, but that's how that's how he originally got the test rack. Was he stole it from? Yes, because he Nick broke Carey. into that 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 containment site. Yeah. Um, speaking of that. breaking in, 
we generally know that the beginning of each card, a prelim, early prelim, are, some, are fights that are ways of breaking people into an audience, um, whether they're on Fox or whether they're on ESPN+. Plus. What is one fight that you're really excited about in the early, um, the early prelims, per se? Uh, you know, I'd have to go with uh, Close and Diagos. Why? Why, why Dracker Close and Diagos? Or Diagos? Because you know they're they're both still young. Yeah. Um, you know they both got a close record. Yes. Close close is ten and one. Yeah. You gotta go seventeen and seven. Yes. Right. Both got a bunch of finishes and they're tenacious and it just is. It just seems like it's gonna be a war and somebody's gonna. Somebody gonna get knocked out. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's getting knocked out, but I'm... I did I did pick close by decision. Nice, but. Yeah. It just, it's, yeah, and it's you know, a toss up. And you know, close is a MMA lab guy, and both these yeah, yeah, trains yeah. in Arizona, so it's going to be an interesting little rivalry. Oh, nice. Yeah, um, I'm really torn on two fights. Um, Mazo versus Dobson. Yeah. Dobson hasn't really been performing since her stint on Ultimate Fighter. Right. And Mazo does a lot of head kick finishes. Right. Um, so that one's going to be interesting. Back to back. And, back to uh, back. Yeah. A couple years ago, it was 2017 or something. But then you also have Sanhagen, right? Yeah. Versus Asun Sao. And Sanhagen, we know, is just on some other stuff when he gets on the ground. Like, he's just on the next level, which is uh-huh. really cool. But um, Asun Sao's jiu-jitsu is no joke. No, not at all. Proven, right? Right. The one I'm really excited about, I have no reason why Devontae Smith is not in my, uh, my fantasy league. I just have no reason. Like, I just, it's not fair that I didn't get to him fast <laughs> enough. Uh, but this dude, this guy's hilarious on Instagram. I like his training ethic. Um, I like the way he thinks. I'm very excited about that. And this is not actually going to be a fight against John McAdesi. Um Right. It's going to be... Uh, Clay Collard. Yeah. Collard Greens. Taking the fight on short notice. This his, is his... His, Second stint in the UFC, right? His mama name him Clay, and I'm going <laughs> to call him Clay. Clay going to sleep. Uh, yeah. Everybody With all else? the knockouts that Devonta has, I, I, I definitely picking him for a KO. And I'm still not sleeping on Hannah Cyphers. I, I don't, I can't recall who I was looking at. I'm like, yo, she's scary. Um, so first of all, Cyphers' nickname or ring name is Shockwave. Nice. Which is sad because it means he she lost to A Train. Um, <laughs> hey, Jody, get, get off that compound V. Get off that compound V. <laughs> Jody, on the other hand, uh, Jody Esquibel. 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 Um, she lost to Angela Hill, and I'm not trying to be mean, but if you lost to Angela Hill, that means you really like, you really can't f- strike. Because Angela Hill, we know, has no ground stuff. So she's just right. going to touch you up with Muay Thai. So this is definitely Cypher's fight. And she does look like that angry girl who, you know, like, who gets caught, like, for shoplifting and doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> Had to go there, huh? I did. I did. Um, any other ones that we should talk about? I feel like they feeding Brandon Davis. They gave him Kang. You you think Kang got a shot? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think they feeding Brandon Davis. They're like, I like you. I like you. You got a Home Depot kind of contractor entrance haircut. I'm gonna I'm gonna hook you up. Too much. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to take a break. I am your host, Sweet NBA. I'm joined by... Brain Damage. And uh, everything you hear right now is brought to you by Dream Ear Productions. A um, couple words. You can always catch us at Seawolf watching the fights. You should buy the book. And if you want to sponsor us, we're not, we're not strangers to sponsors. We're not going to say no to you. But first thing that you have to do before you sponsor us, click like, subscribe, sign up, get it in your feed. Make sure it just goes directly. Do you have iTunes? Do you have iRadio? I, I 
Do you have I, Apple Radio? Are we logged in? Do you have it already? Is that the podcast? You got Spotify? Are you already in the feed? Do you have Google Music? Do you use podcasts? Are we already in your feed? That's the way to do it. That's the only way to do it. Um, other little shout out. If you have a chance, check out. Um, there is a podcast put out by Gimlet Media. Uh, a podcast by the name of the life and times of Reggie Ose. Rest in peace. Um, the pod father himself. Uh, Combat Jack, um, the first to really introduce people who look like us into the space. Um, celebrate your elders and give a listen and understand who came first. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Holler. This is Tyson Griffin. Sean Bunch. The Myron and Hitman Smith. Jordan the Juggernaut Pal. Maurice Alonso. Shout out to Cage Against the Machine, MMA Podcast, MMA Fantasy League for you. You Google them right now because I'm about to Google them. And we are back. I used to have a different saying, but unfortunately, it doesn't feel right without my African brother here. <laughs> it just doesn't. We return. A little bit more refined, a little bit more chaos, a little bit more laid back, a little bit more of a uh, drive to commute kind of podcast rather than a, uh, you know, a debate. We are at the uh, main card of uh, UFC 241. One, Daniel Cormier versus Stipe Miocic. Two. Part two. Usually I wear my DC double champ shirt, but I don't because I wait for the night of the fight. Speaking of which, we will be watching this fight at my brother and co-founder Josh Shia's house. He has a homecoming. Uh... Yes. Double D probably won't be there because it's his birthday. And he likes to be, you know, flaky and effusive. Nice. He just grabs one a, day. He'll, just, he'll just grab a hot hot balloon and disappear. Leo then, huh? My daughter's on the 14th. Shout out to Ari. Uh, hi, Ari. Hi. Because of Ari, I have nothing negative to say about Leo's. Right. <laughs> But if you could change your birthday, Ari, I'll, I'll open the floodgates. <laughs> I'll open the floodgates. And I joke all this stuff, and I know I'll just be a dad one day, and I'll have a Leo. Right. Like, how do I deal with this? What do mm -hmm. I do? All right. Our first fight. Very excited. Shout out to Willie Green. Shout out. That introduction. We got one Derek Brunson. Carolina's own. Derek Brunson versus Ian <laughs> I, I'm thinking it's Heinrich. 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 Remember Heinz fifty seven. We, we need you, J.K. We're we're on the pronunciation like lower tier, and you're up in the elite Heinrich. level. You know what I mean? Heinrich. You can you can buy app for that. Heinrich. Uh, remember Heinrich. Heinz fifty. Remember Heinz fifty seven, where you couldn't afford it. your parent. Your mom didn't get a A one sauce. They got the Heinz fifty seven. What is this? Was it's good on chicken? No, it's not. <laughs> um, how do you think this fight goes? I think that Brunson needs to get back to his wrestling roots or he is going to be in for a short night. Oh, against this guy? Yeah. But you don't think he did 100% better in his last fight? He did, but he was getting back to his roots a little bit, at least mixing it in there. Yeah. And But, like, it was crazy because it, his last four fights before that was he, he, he got a couple of knocked out. Or got a couple of knockouts, and then he got knocked out twice in a row. So it was like four knockouts in a row. He got two knockouts, and then he got split up three times. It wasn't working. Yeah, so it's like... He had to change camps, he, though. I yeah, think. it was one of those things where the wrestler started knocking people out and fell in love with his striking. No, and then, no, like, no, no, You no. had to get... That's not it. You don't think I disagree, it? no. I think he's one of the first four guys at Jackson Winkle Jump. Wait. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you. Uh, him, he goes back. I didn't, him or, I didn't even know he was one. Yeah, Rashad brought him in to be the middleweight. Okay. Okay? So he even predates John. Yeah, right? Yeah, because right, he was right. in strike force. Right, right. Okay. He, so he's in that era, and then he stays around after Rashad leaves and finds out, and, you know, things aren't what they are. On top of which, he lives... Across the country. So think about that. You got a gym, you got kids, you got family on the East Coast, but your camp is over in Albuquerque 
and the dudes who really mess with you just left. Make no sense at all. So if blah, you notice, blah. if you notice blah, where blah. he went, right, he's at Hard Knocks now. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was where he, that's why his style changed, right? So when he's trying to change, train himself to fight against Whitaker, that's not going to go well. Right. Against, you know. Jacare. Jacare, that's not going to yeah. go well. Yo right? Well. Yo well, right. So look at those radical change of him going down to South Florida, being around Rashad, being around Kamaru, being around that crew, and then building him up. And now, especially with, in my prediction, with Luke Rockhold gone, right? He's not made that formal announcement, but he really is not. I mean, he's yeah, not at yeah. 185. So you really have the number one premier 185-er at their squad that they can build, they can really push. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, I think if he follows the script, you know, they're keep it simple, stupid uh, script, I think he could be amazing. Um, I think if he's not careful, he will end up Michael Johnson-ish. Mm, that's deep. That is deep. Because Johnson had some big wins, so much potential, and then sometimes it just he a little bit of BJ Penn esque. Like no, some I mean, days you some days he yeah. just shows up and it's like, where's the passion? And other days he just shows up like like he has a win over Ferguson. Well, you know I, what I mean? Yeah, I still feel well again, yes, and I still feel remember, I think Habib took his soul. But look at what happened against Emmett. Right? He was touching Emmett up all day mm -hmm. and it just took one shot. And he could, and he just didn't move, right? right. So, um, but see, that's where I think Brunson is headed towards. Is like he's been taking some shots, and yes, if he gets caught clean, yes. he gets rocked. It could be yes. trouble. Whereas he correct, if, but like you said, if he if he follows the script and makes sure that he doesn't get touched up, then and a lot his of experience, it was, he's got a lot of it. He would put his head forward and keep charging, and that's yeah, that's I think not he's got like. 27 fights or something like that, 25 fights compared to Heinrich's 14. So, yeah. like, his experience level is, you know what I mean? Right. That's what he has to rely on. Right. And he's just got to stay, you know, stay working hard against those killers down there. So, um, so yeah, I think I think this could very much be Brunson's night. Okay. I uh, think I think Heinrich is going to catch him, but, I, you know, I, you know I pulls for Brunson hard. So I got I, faith, I hope, Derek. I got faith. I, yeah, I... He hooked us up at 192. Or was it 193? 193, yeah. 193. See, that's what happens when you start was, aging. Right. Um, moving on to our next featherweight bout, we have Gabriel Benitez versus Sodik Yusuf. Man, this one's going to be fun. What makes this fun to you? These guys are heavy hitters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are heavy hitters. They got uh, 17 finishes for Benitez, 9-1 uh, and one with 5 KOs for Yusuf. And you know Yusef is part of the mafia, the Nigerian mafia. So, yeah, no, yeah, part of okay, the clique, so. okay, yeah, yep, yeah, he's I part did. of the clique. Yeah, man, they're they're coming up. It's like how Dagestan was coming up. Yeah, you, you know, five that, six years ago, and now now Nigeria is starting to explode. I would almost predict that that would be the ultimate. Like, remember how it used to be about like Brazil versus Japan for a while? Yeah. Like, I would predict that would be the ill, like Dagestan versus Nigeria, except for the fact that Ali Aziz is like the manager of everybody, right? Right. You come from a country that's like sixty percent Muslim, and Ali Ali's your 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 manager. You can't yeah. have them fools beef. That's nuts, man. Right. Deep, right? Uh, yeah. So, who do you see pulling this one off? I think it could go either way. I think what I wrote was Benitez by sub, but mm. you know that like I almost don't even believe myself. I feel like somebody's getting knocked out in this fight. I'm gonna go the other way. I think there will be a war, but I think it'll be Yusef by decision. Okay, but it'll be a great war. I I, I think th this is definitely when you don't go take a taco or a tinkle break. This no. is when you, but th this whole card. This one, this one, you you better go take a piss before yeah. the main card starts. No, even after this right here, yeah, you need to hold it after this <laughs> next. When I'm about to announce this next fight, you need to hold it. You need to get a bag or something. <laughs> get a little can under the table. Mm -hmm. Don't show nobody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this next fight, ah, uh, I, I, I'm very upset that this got pushed back so many times, but now it's happening. Right. I've been begging for this to happen. Mm -hmm. I've wanted to this to happen. This is it. Joel Romero versus Paulo Costa. And it's like it's, like, it's like Batman versus Superman. Just just the the, the bodies. Martha. <laughs> what just, did you say? 
Like, the way they're just so cut. Like, you know what I mean? I think of it more as, like, you used to watch Masters of the Universe? Yes. You remember uh, Ram Man? Yes. Like, Ram Man versus, like, Man at Arms. Yeah, but their right. bodies are right. They're basically two tree trunks fighting each other. Right. Right? Oh, this is incredible. And, um, and yo, like, right now, like, Costa's young and has the hype train. Yes. Yoel is an older guy, but st- he's not one of those old guys that is like... But is he? He's... Is he old? Well, he's 40. Is he? But that's what I'm saying. He's older. Do we know but, that? Have you seen his birth certificate? Well, I mean, Cubans don't go older for the birth certificate. They go younger. They don't go birth certificate. <laughs> right. But that's what I'm saying. They're not going to announce that they're older. They're going to say they're younger. Right. Unless they're Unless, playing Little League Baseball. You don't but, know, right. <laughs> right. But I'm just saying, does he have a birth certificate? But, but what I'm He could be 32 and just had a hard life, bro. This guy is now a multimillionaire. 27 mil in the bank. So he he, he doesn't even need to be out there. He's just doing this because it's still passion. This is so deep because as I was getting off the BART, yeah, I do ride BART. Um, I like being with the people. And I was waiting for my esteemed brother and producer, D, Double D, to pick me up. I saw a brother walking with a New Zealand shirt. Nice. And, you know, it's a key order to him. Me and he found out he was a Maori living here, and I was like, "You must be very upset." <laughs> was like, I feel lied to. So, yeah, I'm gonna help you. Um, and it made me think of uh, something near and dear to my heart, October. So I was like, "No matter who wins this fight, it does not bode well for Whitaker or Adesanya." That is true. Both of these guys are murderous. Right. Um. I definitely think Yoel is the bigger problem for both because he 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 also has the wrestling man and the power, whereas Costa I feel like is just all power and athleticism. Bro, and he hasn't he doesn't have the experience. Okay, but so you, let's be real, neither one of those guys are going to wrestle with him anyway. So it's, no. yeah, you still got to avoid the power. It's basically I, what it comes down to. And with Romero, you've got a bunch of things, right? Um, Romero has right now, by all statistical chances, everything going for him. Yeah. He doesn't have to fight for money because he won $27 million. He's already been an Olympic champ. Right. He's got the entirety of AT&T, ATT behind him and is the guy who trained Masvidal for that knee. Okay? The, the same one that he landed on Weidman. Bro, that, a time, that Cuban Missile Crisis. Remember you were asking me why you call it that stuff? I'm like, yo, it works. Um, uh... You have all these perfect coaches in Florida. You have access to Shaquille O'Neal in terms of strength training. And then yet you get to train with all the Albuquerque dudes and being a training partner for John Jones. Right. So, and you've already gone through the who's who of strike force and you've climbed up and obliterated one by one every 185er. Right, because he, let's be real, he's lost one in strike force. I think it was Rafael Cavallo or one of those guys. Or, or Feijal. It was Feijal, right. Feijal. Right, and then the two with See, Whitaker were, two with Whitaker were <laughs> razor thin. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those were close fights. Yeah. So it's like. The and, first one. And both these guys. The first one, how, how do I put it? I don't know that I would. Say the premise they were razor thin. I'm getting so well, much trouble. Well, yeah, this. It, the first one wasn't as you, close, but it was a close a, fight. You kicked the dude's knee out and couldn't beat him. Right, and it, you was, lost. it was the first one was clear that Whitaker. And, it, and then you, the second right. one was like, but no, the second one is to you, be you, the man. Mm-hmm, you have basically. to beat right. the man. And, and I appreciate you, the judges for finally honoring that during right. the fight because a lot of times they don't. And if you want to say that, that's cool. Okay, if you want to give that to, if you want to say that Romero won that fight, then you need to give the belt to Dan Henderson. No, I wouldn't say Romero won that fight. I just thought, I wouldn't either. I just, no, the same the argument. The way the judges go, I was looking at that fight at the end of it like, oh but my the, God, I don't know which way this the is The common going. argument on Twitter is that he dropped Whitaker. Okay? He, tra- he dropped him a couple of times, but... So Henderson dropped Bisbing twice and still didn't get the belt. Right. So if you're going to use that fictional but logic... I think that's, that's the same point is that like yes. a couple of those drops were in the same round, so it's like... Yeah. And this is what I'm frustrated with MMA scoring is that a dude can drop 
a guy in round one and round two, and then the next three rounds are close, coast. and then you give it to the champion. Like, and then whoever coasts because of the 10 fifth. 9 boxing system, this is not boxing. We need to update this system, it's it needs better, to be though. off it's pride better. points. Yeah, it is getting better, it's but getting better. And although, as these old judges start getting weeded out, and we yeah. get those guys like Ricardo Almeida to come in and be judges that know what they're looking yeah. at. It's going to get better. But yeah. I, I still feel like it needs a little bit of overhaul in the points. Yeah, and I think, isn't Pat Militich a judge now too? But yeah, I, nice. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. But I, I mean, yeah, I think there's also those other problematic where as much as it's getting better, then you see those other decisions. And you're like, what? All right. Like we just saw a couple of those in the last car. We're like, what? Really? So, <laughs> um, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure this is Romero's fight by round two. Yeah, I got Romero on this one. I'm, but it's it's crazy the way they both had that killer. Like, Costa, he's undefeated with all finishes. Or only one of them submission. In Romero my, is in my only opinion, two dis- that weren't knockouts. Yeah, in my opinion, Costa has been fed. Well, when you're an up, or co- up and coming before you get to the UFC, that's... Let's look at that's his... That's pretty much... Let's look at his no- last three knocked out. And last then, three knockouts. Who did he fight? I didn't even check. Okay, so let's, <laughs> let's start. My his, bad. His first knockout, Johnny Hendricks, stuck at 185. Right. Get real. Okay? Next one, Uriah Hall. Oh, that was a good fight, too. One-dimensional. One-dimensional, right? But, but Costa is also in that dimension, and he just out-dimensioned him. Oh, Costa has hands and feet. Hall has feet. And a terrible he's attitude. Got, he's got hands. He's got hands, but mm, yeah, his, not as dangerous as a sweep. His boxing is not. That's his problem. And then he has no gra- grapple or no clinch, right? Yes. So. T- terrible attitude. Right. Oh, well. Um, so, you think it's, you think it's uh, Romero? Oh, yeah, this definitely. Is great. This is Romero. This is great. I mean, if Costa pulled off the upset by knockout, I wouldn't be that surprised, but yeah. it's... it's the, Romero has nothing to lose, and he's just got the experience... I power. will enjoy this fight. Yes. Uh, we are now mo- moving on to our co-main event. Uh, I couldn't be more biased and more excited. Um, <laughs> we have Showtime, Anthony P- Pettis versus Stockton Zone, the young homie, Nathan Diaz. Um, what can we say about this? It's been a long time. We shouldn't have left you. Yeah, Diaz has only almost been out for three years to the date. To the date. He, yeah, that last fight with Connor was uh, August twentieth, and this fight is what August sixteenth. Yeah. So it's it's pretty much three years. Right. And um, you know, some some people as as uh, my homie Juan Carlos likes to say is that the ring rust ain't real, but I I just don't believe it. Well, there's some people it's not real for. Dominic Cruz proved that, right? Yeah. Some people need to take a reset and a break and actually that wearing down their body yeah. and working out like that That's doesn't true. do well. Um, so this is hard because you haven't seen Nate in so long. I have nothing but faith in him, right? Right. But the notion that he's not active in these three years is insane to me. And he hasn't done as well at 170 in his career that he's done at 155, whereas Pettis' last fight was his first fight at 170 and knocked out Wonder Boy who has never been knocked out before. So he, that was his yeah, best performance but, since he won the championship. Yeah, but again, let's go back to this. Who is Wonder Boy fighting? Fought Woodley twice. Yeah, but he didn't, I mean, he, he wasn't going to stand in front of Woodley. When he did, what happened? See, that's the problem. He didn't knock him out. I know that much. But he knocked him down, right? So point is, Wonder but Boy. But he got right back up. Wonder Whereas Boy's magic. Oh. Slept him. Right, Wonder Boy's thing works when he stands in front of wrestlers like Hendrix, who don't move their head. Right, but besides Matt Brown, and who also did not finish Wonder Boy, but beat the living hell out of right, him. Right, right, nobody, right. Nobody's done like very well with Wonder Boy. Whereas, uh, like, even uh, when Woodley beat him, what's his name? It was um, a boring like feel out fight. You know what I mean? What's a uh, homeboy from England? Uh, oh, Carolina. Uh, Till. Till. Till got at him, right? Maybe Till didn't win the fight, but he still put a lot of damage on him. So if you notice that a lot that of... That fight, man. Right? I feel like... Well, I think that Pettis', that. Pettis is striking is really good, and he yeah. stood right in front of him and touched him up. Um, and this is 
a, a mirror of what we just talked about with uh, Paul is like Pettis has hands right. and feet, whereas Diaz has Pettis, hands. Pettis has feet and some hands. He has very diverse feet. He's definitely got the Taekwondo and obviously the Muay Thai. He comes from the Rufus sport. Nate, we know. He's got the boxing. Right. We're not playing. We're dealing and with... Bo- both guys have great jiu-jitsu. Great jiu-jitsu. I, but I who's, think I would, li- get, I would edge Nate out on Pettis, but Pettis has some underrated jiu-jitsu. Oh, absolutely. I think... Here's the difference. I think Pettis has, like, counter jiu-jitsu. Like, he sets his stuff up mm-hmm. to fight against wrestlers. I think D- Diaz learns jiu-jitsu to choke people out in the back of a club. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like... You know what I'm saying? Like... <laughs> I'm going to choke uh, you out yeah. and walk away because you tried to jump me. Um, so, I don't know. It's interesting because Pettis brings these kicks from mid-range. This is really such a good matchup. I could actually see Diaz winning by third round submission. Hmm. I, I really want Nate Diaz to win this fight and start fighting um, on a consistent basis again because the guy is so entertaining. Both of them, the Diaz brothers, yeah. so entertaining here's, inside and outside of the ring. Here's my prediction. But, He's only doing this so he can move his contract over. What do you mean move his contract over? Zuffa boxing. Oh, you think he's going to go boxing now? I think that's his, hey, Dana. Him, him, him and Nick both been wanting I mean, you know, they used to box before Amateur League. And- I'd rather box. They feel he feels he can make more money. Yeah, and you ain't got to deal with the takedown anymore. Even right. though they both got great right. jujitsu, they're right. not or very well at getting up from the takedown right. from or, a, uh, elite wrestlers. You or know leg I mean? kicks. Right. Right, which changes your stance. Right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is our co-main event. We'll be right back. Uh, I am the Sweet NBA. I am next to Brain Damage. We are produced and brought to you by Double D um, at Dream Air Productions. We are sponsored by Sea Wolf Oakland Public House. We'll be right back. Like, subscribe, follow us. Don't be a follower yourself, but just follow us. We'll be right back. And get the book. Get the book. Get the book! You are listening to Cage Against the Machine, and this is J.K. Cans. If you like what you're hearing, give us a holla by rating, liking, following on iTunes or SoundCloud. This is Cage Against the Machine. Get at us. Chill. I hath returned. The king under the mountain. <laughs> thought I, I thought I was Gimli, man. You can't be the king under the mountain. <laughs> Gimli is his uncle. Okay. Not his dad. That's just the movie. I was just trying to quote the cartoon. You never seen that? The OG, the old, the old. OG Hobbit cartoon? Yeah. That shit used to get me such nightmares. <laughs> Oof. But Mary gets they're out, lo- they're gets out the barrel all drunk. I have returned. The, I love that uh, that uh, Rock and Rook made that that song with the... with the Oh, yeah. Round Down and the it. circle and spiral. <laughs> I was like... Yep. That's why I was they just, Yeah. From yeah. Return of the King? Oh, hobby, yeah. Hobby beat. Yeah. Because they really are. Helter Skelter was my maybe some hip-hop orcs. Right. Straight up, if you think about yes. it, you know what I mean? Ooh. When there's a whip, <laughs> there's a... Yeah. I love Lovely. it. Rest Lovely. Rest in peace, Sean. Yeah. So much. It was the anniversary, it what, was. yesterday? Yeah, man. It's time, to listen, some, uh, it's time to listen to some uh, barbiturate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> how much... How much a much needed change like Stephanie Mills with a nose job. <laughs> <laughs> or they got these all these democratic like uh uh debates. Just keep thinking to myself, stop fretting, you know the chip. <laughs> Same four years ago that voted for <laughs> Oh, I miss you, Sean. I miss right. you a lot. Still putting out still putting out better music than these clowns all over the place. Straight up. And I just feel like, again, that's why we started this podcast. I just remember that when we were doing this. I'm just a healthier, happier person. I'm like, you know, down to a different place. And I remember Sean just telling me, he's just like, dude, you got to get away from rap. Rappers will die. I was just that, that was that night that we went to go to uh, yeah. the show over there by uh, Patrol Hill, right? Yeah. Yeah. We went and saw him. And he was like, dude, you got you to gotta stay. That was so amazing. With Danny Brown. 
Right. Yeah, where he's like, dude, you got to stay. You got to get away from rat. I told you to stay away and you're happy. So stay farther away. You'll be alive longer. Um, and then And then t- two albums later, he's talking about. My brother is sick. Yeah. My pops had passed. Like, yeah. Oh, I see you. And I see was, you. And Good he was, shout out. Yeah, and he was kind of he was kind of prophetic too with that. You know, like pops got shot, Biggie got shot, Gravy got shot. Who nobody, nobody cares. cares. <laughs> America, where we shoot people in public once a week. <sighs> hey, 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 sweet, what you doing this weekend? Not leaving. Right. I'm in the house. I'll be in the backyard. You know what I mean? See you tomorrow. We'll watch Shevchenko. Um, he meant Shevchenko. Shout out to Jeff. Shevchenko. <laughs> Dr. Shevchenko. And you, Professor Penko. Uh, um, we are now at that time. My favorite time. The favorite time. It is, without further ado, the main event of the evening. Fighting! That's as far as I can do. That's right. what happens when you don't pay us, Dana. When you don't pay us and you renege on your contract, I cannot bring Dr. J.K. Atkins to be our African Bruce Bunifer. What would his name be if Bruce Buffer was African? Bruce Bruce. It'd be like C.K. <laughs> La Bouffer. <laughs> um, we are now at the main event. The former double champ champ, now the heavyweight champion, Daniel D.C. Cormier versus the former heavyweight champion, Stipe Miocic. This is a very intriguing fight. Um, In a lot of ways, D.C. is the last of a dying breed. Um, The last active, able-bodied champion of a glorious... uh, crew of fighters in the name of AKA who one by one have not been able to maintain belts. Right. Right. I mean, one could throw Habib in there, but really Habib is Josh Thompson's disciple. And he's only, he's only been able to defend it one One time. Right. Um, so you got to give this dude credit to go from where he's gone to, to be who he is. Um, speaking of which you have ESPN plus. I do. Can do you watch detail? Detail. What's detail? Oh Yo. no! I ha- I've seen Yo. I've seen I've seen half an episode. I love that show. Yo, I love that. I think show. I've seen half of the first bro, one. Bro, I forgot about that because because you, you, you know they they send you notifications. They never bro. tell me no notifications. That, about that is exactly how my brain works. I love that. Like it's just the detail where he'll just take things back and be like, oh, see the foot here, see this here, see how they move. Don't watch what's gonna happen. Yo, it's incredible. Yeah. That's why when. When Dom Cruz first started yeah. doing commentating, I was like, like this dude is no wonder he's so good. He got that IQ like Oh yeah, because Dom's at a different but he's, level. Now but he's she, just, hey, you know who else is like that? Quite as kept without giving away a secret? Hooker. Yeah. Hang it. Nice. Like a straight scientist. Like he just the details. He's always huh? Huh? Nah, 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 nah. I mean, that's why he pulled Vic apart so quick. Yeah. Did you see his speech? I did. I love that. I demand to be on that card. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on, Get bro. me on there. Yeah. Hey, I real, demand. Real quick, though. Yeah. Since, since you uh, mm-hmm. mentioned that, you know, Dana ain't paid yet and he keeps it like all the, like the website still says Magdesi and they change. You know what I mean? Like, so ESPN. Yeah. Now the main promoter of the, U- or, you know, media of the UFC few weeks ago baseball our star weekend they had the celebrity softball match which they have every year steep it was ohio because the 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 right. the, the, the all-star game was in ohio so it was uh celebrities of ohio versus celebrities of the world right. steep amiochik played that game yeah all game long those announcers called him the current ufc heavyweight champion espn the one that is all media for the UFC surprise, couldn't get it together surprise, to say surprise, former UFC heavyweight Surprise champion. that baseball journalists <laughs> could not tell you anything about MMA. This they, is they, they weren't even They weren't even baseball. There were more other celebrities. That's but my point. ESPN should have that information that's, for them. So, Dana, get your ish together. What if... What, we'll uh, be waiting. Let's go the other way. What if they don't care? 
They probably don't. What if they don't care? Like, here's what you're supposed to read. Yeah, cage fighting. Right. They're, you know. But if it was boxing, they wouldn't say Anthony Joshua, the current heavyweight champ. No, he got knocked out. Sorry. Bro, they would. That's what Sorry. I'm pointing out. They would. You see, you 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 see, jur- right. so-called journalists say insane things all the time. Right, but I've I've been watching ESPN for a few decades now. They wouldn't do boxing like that. But they you wouldn't. know, the UFC, whatever. Right, nobody they knows would. this guy, anyways. They would. We'll just call him the current UFC heavyweight champion. They would. They only they when only really out a they only respect ago. NFL and NBA. That's all they respect. The only thing they have to know right is what's going to make the ads. That should have made some ads. Yeah, it should have. Um, do you see this fight going differently? Obviously, it's a decision, maybe. Obviously, the sneak attack ain't going to be there. Right. Exactly. He's weary of that now. Yeah. But I, I feel like if it starts getting rough on the feet, that's where Daniel can just change levels, put him on his back, and start ground and pounding him, try to flip him over and pull off the, the Rumble Johnson, Derek Lewis, rear naked choke. Speaking of which, very quickly, um, I made a kind of comment earlier, and I didn't really speak to it a little bit more. Did you know that Daniel Cormier spends most of his time in Gilroy? Gilroy is that the the high school that he re- that he coaches? Yeah, and the place where he lives, and most of the squad that he's bringing in, right. all the guys he's training with, all all AKA Gilroy. Nice. I just, I just, I just really appreciate that the guy will. He he knows he's got. He's got avenues to. Yeah, to I don't wealth. see this. And it's like a high school. Yeah, I'll come. I'll come coach you, but you know, yeah. put put the money back in. What I really love is you don't, he, don't worry, you ain't got to pay me. Just put it back into the school. When he was training with a uh, uh, cardio cane a lot, he used to go over to uh, Oak Grove mm-hmm. in San Jose and really help them out, which is a hugely predominantly African American and Latino high school. That my boy Brandon was a principal at. Nice. Yeah. Speaking of cardio cane, did you see that uh, Hurricane Lucha. Ronnie? That's up? what I'm saying, the little lucha libre. But that's what I'm saying. It's like but the end of an era. Like it's, I thought it's, he, I thought he had his knee all bad. Maybe he just healed, and he's like, you know what? I'm doing- I just, I, yeah, I just, I just don't think he wants to be an MMA fighter anymore. And I think we need to be better. I think that the pro, the tri- what made them great is also what took them out, right? Right. Like that end but, of, like remember that quote at the end of Duel the Iron Mike. Which one is that? And without the techniques, they were lost. Oh, okay. Right? So it's like, what made that squad so amazing, that's why now there's only Daniel. Right? But so is this something Kane is pursuing? This is it. He's or done. Or he just was like, this is one time, get it off my bucket list. I think he is done with UFC. I think he's wrestling. I think he learned from Ronda. I think he learned from them other ones. Mm-hmm. I think Kobe, Colby is talking about going to WWE. I think people are getting hip to the game. Right, because you can make so much more money. And I mean... Correct. It's it's different because, you know, yeah, it's scripted, but it's it's brutal. I mean, like you're on the road, what, 50 weeks out of the... Or, yep. Or, you know what I mean? Out of the year and but but if we think just about because it, it's scripted, a big man slamming you like this and you know how to fall on your back still doesn't it still sure. hurts. You know what I mean? Right. And then the the trade off though is you look at this like if you're gonna do if you fight if you look at the schedule that say uh, let's say Israel pulled yeah six fights in a year Connor fighting six fights in a year a nine week fight camp yeah. let's do the math that's fifty weeks right but you're not on the road doing it. Yeah, you you're are. still at home. Mm. Well, unless you're pulling that Brunson, but mm. most of these even guys- if you're at home, think about this. Let's take Con- let's take M- uh, uh, McGregor. You still got to fly from Ireland. What's the flight to from- the fight? Right. What's the flight from New Zealand? So you got to think about all that climate stuff. Whatever you still your life's on the road. Right. But so that's and what then I'm if saying. you're at a place that doesn't have the ecosystem, we're spoiled. We're spoiled. We could be in a place where. Uh, Everything's all under one roof, right? Like even the back when we used to go to the CFC days, um, we're lucky. But then you see Tyson Griffin is driving down to San Jose to, to make sure that Habib is there trained because yeah. Habib says he's his best sparring partner, right? right. See what I'm saying? So yeah. we're lucky and spoiled in the Bay Area that we got 30 to 40 years of martial arts and MMA where people could keep it all in the baked at home. Right. You live somewhere else. You got to drive around for a while. Yeah, 
two, three hour commute. Two, three two, hour, hour every day, right? Hour. Right? Yeah, that's true. So imagine what that's like when you're from a country where you're the one holding up the show. You're holding the fight card on your shoulders. So you're on the road all the time. It's a myth, you know? I didn't think of it that way. It's a so. myth. Or even this, even this. Like, I always, you know, I always mess with this guy. Well, he's like, okay, well, how'd you get your body to look like this? I was like, I go train with the Avengers. I was like, okay, well, I want to come. I was like, well, I don't want to be riding Bart sweaty. Right? So, right. that's still road work. Right. You're still on the road. So, it's, it's the lifestyle's still there. You're just not getting no pay. And then you got to do media stuff. And, yeah, and you can't get sponsors. No wonder. No Bro, wonder. Man, I, that's one of the biggest things that I disagree with the UFC about is fighters can't get sponsored, but you look at that mat and the octagon and the poles, and it's like they got 35, 40 sponsors on that thing. But that's why, because I'm not defending their model, but I see why the model is there, because they guarantee the money. Guarantee the money. They, but It ain't a lot of money, but it's guaranteed. Uh, yeah, unless you've been fighting there for years and years and years, and still the, the what maxes out at what, 20000 Right, but you guarantee. But then there's all the under the table money. But they guarantee the money as opposed to like Bellator. Yeah, you can sign a contract and maybe that happens, right? And then you get knocked out and all that dries up. So. If, you, if you get knocked out, you might get a pink slip from the UFC, anyways. True. Right. Yes. So, but that, but that's what I'm saying. I, I get it. You don't want to have the thing on the uniform, whereas like soccer is the biggest sport in the world, and they got sponsors all over their uniforms. But that's right. still a team thing. But can they can't why why can't they at least have their banners anymore? Because the banners again, ain't hurting nobody. Hell, hold that the, thing up for you thirty hit the seconds. The head. The there's f- no there's no central you we talk about this once a year. There's no central unifying brand to keep the fighters under this. Right? right. It's not it's not team Cerrone. It's sponsored by Protein Pack, whatever. And we know every time Team Cerrone shows up. We're going to get X amount of ad buys that turns into X amount of monetization. We're going to sell X amount of t-shirts. There's no such thing as that. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a, a wild, wild west. So to deal with that portfolio, aha, there it goes again. <laughs> something's going to go up. Something's going to lose. You have to find a guaranteed way to make sure. I can say by the end, I can guarantee you that everybody who's on this card is at least going to make $5,000 tonight. And, and I can make sure we'll take care of your meals. We'll take care of you sleeping somewhere. And that, and that's going to happen whether we are in Boston or whether we're in Bosnia. So there's a lot of infrastructure things that people forget that the UFC under, but they don't take care of flights for all your camp. No, no. That should, that should be in there. But then how do you define all your camp? Now we're back to that. Now we're, well, uh, just, it should be head coach, assistant coach, that's, trainer. Like maybe that's a set amount of. of like four. That's taken care of. But your wife, you want your wife, your pregnant wife to be there when you when you win? No, we're not paying for that. Well, depending who you are. Like uh, Cerrone, I could see them paying for. Uh, Ian Hennich, mm, probably not. They're not. They're going to say, we give you a million dollars last fight. We gave you a million dollars to fight Ferguson. You can't afford your wife's flight? I see you have a boat. <laughs> that we don't want you on because you, you always end up injured. Do you forget that I used to manage rappers? Well, but I Hold just on. use him as you an example. You have a diamond on your neck and you don't have money for this? For rent? <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> See? I'm not saying, look, I, I'm not saying Dana's always right, but I empathize with his attitudes about stuff because I see... People who don't want to pay for the infrastructure and the ecosystem always making demands and then not being honest about it. Like the whole thing with Cyborg. Right? Always trying to talk that crazy to him and then they look how it turned out. Her people and her edited that video. Right. Right? And I ain't got no reason to diss Cyborg. She's been very good to our podcast. I just am not stupid. I'm not going to sit there and play a video and then and edit my video and try to make my boss look like an a-hole and then wonder why my boss is like, I'm cool. I'm cool. He was going to be like, you I'm ain't cool only, either way. But bro, yeah, that no, was the icing on the cake. You ain't never, but he went out of his way. He had to grab a damaged product, right? Who was on steroids, rebrand her. He had to spend all this money on it. He invented a belt for her, right? 
But do you think that was him or do you think that was him being forced to? Because I feel like he had beef with her before they ever got to her. Why would he have beef? Well, not beef, but like he would talk trash about her. Why would he talk trash? Because he's a jerk. Oh. <laughs> so. I, you can't say that he's not a jerk. I look, I get what you're saying with all the brand and I'm they got to take care I'm of I'm not it. spending Let's money on real. people that Every single like. pay-per-view, Dana make, Dana. And everybody at the top of that company makes yeah. more than all the fighters on that card combined. As they should. As they As should. As they should not. As they should. No. How, how many of these fighters got to hire 30 dudes to set up a cage in another country? Still, they're the, ones, they're the ones the causing the entertainment, putting right. their health and body always, on the line. I always hear this argument. I always hear this argument. That's cool. You're absolutely right. I see you saying. I'm not saying they shouldn't make money at all, but no, I see you saying. You're right. Should, it shouldn't be. You're right. Dana White makes five million, and every fighter on the card makes forty thousand. You're right. No, you're absolutely right. I'll see all y'all fighters at two o'clock to load up them trucks. Let's go. You're right. You're gonna. This is. This is. This is a community. We're gonna share the right, profit. But, so you're saying that because he has the people to set up, those people are not even getting paid as much as the fighters. But, but they have one to get paid. Up. They have to get paid. But they, but but why is he getting paid five million while everybody on who's, the whole car who's getting paid five everybody million? Everybody who set up the cage, who's everybody who's in the concession who, stands, everybody who, who sold tickets, paid? all of that I doesn't even argument. equal. Who's half getting paid five it. million? Dana. You, t- you tell me out of a t- you tell me out of a every pay per view card, there's a percentage, and Dana White is getting five million, or is the I'm UFC? Just, I'm just throwing something out there. I know Dana's getting. I know the UFC is getting paid, but he's also getting paid. Of course, he's getting paid. He's when the he, owner. When he throws his son a, a three million dollar birthday party for a six sixteenth birthday, right? Come on, he's right. He's getting paid Be- because <sighs> right. Like I said, more he than should be everybody broke. on that. I'm not again. I'm not saying he should, he should be, be broke. broke. I'm not saying he should be broke. He should be poor, living in a box, buying T Woods' new album. You hear this guy? I'm complaining that he makes more than double everybody combined. Know, because he's and the he's owner. saying I'm saying he should be, be an, broke. Be an entrepreneur. Be an entrepreneur. Own your company. He wasn't the entrepreneur. It was the Fertitas. No, he's an owner with the Fertitas now. Wrong. He was the third partner with the Fertitas. He was the one with the idea, and they were the one with there the was money. No, he was not the one with the idea. The idea came from the Gracies and, and Art. Well, but the idea to buy it, it, like, oh, look, that's a good deal. Right. It's, it ain't Exc- ish right now, but let's turn it into something. Let me just give you, okay, let's, let's bring it back. You let me know when we run out of time, Double D. <laughs> DC's going to win. Okay, DC's let's watch this win. real quick. DC's going to win. You and I decide that we want to buy... A place that sells MMA gear. Right? You follow? Yeah. The, and you're going to run it. I'm going to invest. You don't have no money. I put in the money. Right. Right? But, but your name's on it and my name's on it. You're not an owner? No. I was the president. Wrong. Just like he was the president. Wrong. He's an owner. It's in the paperwork. He's an owner now that they got bought. No. Factually incorrect. Incorrect, inconceivable, lack of economic development. Rise up, my people. No, he got a equity injection from his partner investors. He runs operations. They brought in the money. That's why it worked. A three-way. He had no money. He says, Pause. well done. He got 10 mil to get it going, but he was still a partner. And the two brothers were the other two partners. Right. Let's do another analogy. Three members own a record label called Rockefeller. One guy raps, one dude has the money, other dude manages. They're still owners. That's the game I keep trying to get across to all y'all. I want y'all to get it. You can own. That's the beauty of being an entrepreneur. You get paid multiple times. Just because somebody else brings in the money doesn't mean you're not an owner. You set it up on, you know, the thing that you colored people are afraid of, paper. (laughs) And then you take it to the other thing you're afraid of, lawyers, you know, the one you only use when it's time to, you know, steal from your friends. And then you get it signed. Let me ask a question. Let me ask a question real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, people of all ages. 
I'm gonna help you. No, you know what? You know what? I've learned <laughs> something, brain. You need to become an owner in something. That's why you don't understand. You fundamentally are. You need to be. I'm gonna make you an owner of something. We're gonna go find. We're gonna go start a business soon. Oh, that's right. I forgot. We we're supposed to own a cage podcast. You gotta be an owner. So part of being an owner is I could sit there and put in the money, and if I only show up one podcast a month, that's fine. But you set it up with your partners. Dana was always an owner. If you don't believe me, I'll send you the documents. Because I can tell you for a fact, ain't no chance on this heaven or earth that somebody's going to take a company and sell it for $4 billion and magically just be an employee and own it after his parents, after his partners leave. You have to be an owner to start. That's one thing I learned about these rich dudes. They're not letting anybody else in the clique. Right. Right? Let's give you another analogy. You and I put down $5. I got five on it. Deshaun magically decides he wants to hit the trees, walks over. Can I hit it? What are we going to say? You got fake? Right. He's not an owner. <laughs> it doesn't matter the fact that my hands don't so work. Wait, so wait. wait hold on. But I'm you say since yet. your hands don't I'm work. I'm not done. My, it doesn't yeah. matter the fact that I can't roll the blunt. Right. So you got to put in the money for the sack and I'll roll the blunt and right. I'm the owner. We're both owners. We both put in the money, but you did the operations. So when I say, when I say, you know what? Let's just go sell the sack. I'm out. You're still the owner. You're still the owner. That's how it works. <laughs> You're still the owner. Screw you, Dana White. Whether I know. You're owner or not. I know. Facts. <laughs> it's so problematic, but that's why we're here to teach y'all some entrepreneurship through martial arts. Straight up. You gotta be an owner. You gotta be an owner. You know what I became an owner of last week with Deshaun? What? Disney stock. I own pieces of Disney. You know what else I own? I own a piece of the cannabis company that UFC owns. I own a piece of the UFC. They own a cannabis company? Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to get on on that Mike Tyson. <laughs> yeah. You want, you want a Mike Tyson, the uh, Tyson Ranch? Yeah. Nice. We should holler off, off camera. Right. Um. You could be an owner. You can be an owner. I'm about to own these jokes. <laughs> and if y'all don't start owning some of these companies you spend all this money in so you can affect their profits, you're going to have to own these nuts. Get tired of this. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Got him. So tired of it. though. No, but that's the key. That's the difference, though. So, yeah, I agree. Fighter pay. I always hear this. Fighter pay could be better. Fighter pay could be different. It's very different than the NFL. The NFL, they don't let nobody own the franchise. The worst part about it, here's the difference with the NFL. The NFL's a nonprofit. But the fight, the, but the actual teams are for profits. But they don't let nobody who looks like us own. Right, because the only team where the fans are the owners is the Packers. And right. there ain't many of us but that's there part, anyways. But that's part of the property tax. That's what frustrates me. That's what I really would want to see. I would love a football team, an expansion team to be started that comes to the East Bay. And let's make it a, a whole thing that the whole East Bay owns. Make, make a stadium out in Antioch or something. But everybody from that area pays into your property tax. You get a dividend, you know, call it the East Bay, blah, blah, blah. That's the game changer. Blah, blah, blah. The blah, blah whatever. Blah. Right? As opposed to. As we saw with the Niners, it's like one private family keeps it in the private family. Right. And then moves it out of the place. Right. And, and I, again, back to that Jerry Jones things. Hey, Dana, do me a favor. I got this guy named Greg Hardy. You know, <laughs> I want you to hook him up, right? right. Everyone want to talk about Jerry Jones. He gave me opportunities. Don't give me an opportunity. Give me ownership. <laughs> Michael Irvin on that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Michael, how much of the Cowboys do you own? From all them concussions you, you risked. Concussions. <laughs> Straight, let's get real. Oh, I love you for that. I know. Straight up. Magic Johnson, he gets to own what? Lakers. Lakers and what else? But he stepped the out. The Dodgers. The Dodgers, yes. That's right. Ownership. Hove had a little bit of the... Uh, uh, he had a little bit of a basketball team. Then he had a little bit of a stadium, and he parlayed that into owning his own sports agency. 
So we just got to get back to that. It's ownership. That's where the control is. That's where the power is. Own. Okay. That's the thing about it. At this stage, if we honest, until we get more sponsors and y'all start donating money and celebrating and loving our lifestyle so we could just like kick our feet up and do these podcasts for you all day, we don't make no money. But if we did, there's three owners here. We measure it by sweat equity because we show up. So my argument again with the, the fighters is, yes, it could always be better, but also are you paying for the infrastructure? That's the thing they don't think about. Are you paying for all those stadiums? Are you paying for all the things that make your name a household name? No, I don't want to do media. Why should I have to? Dana, Dana be enslaving me. No, 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 no. That's cool. True. But have a different attitude. Yep, I showed up. I was there at 2 o'clock. Da, da, da. And you wonder why Forrest Griffin is taken care of. But they, they're not letting none of the fighters own. How do we know that? We have this feeling. Do we have proof? We've, we've said on this there, podcast. There, isn't it have to be public information? So wouldn't, ah, it, wouldn't it be there? I love where you're going with this. This is where the good questions are. Is WM Deshaun. D. Sean Davis, help us out with this. Is WME-IMG, the parent company of Zuffa, the parent company of UFC, a publicly traded company? Not right now. No. Not right now. Therefore, it is private, which means it does not have to disclose. So they only have to disclose if they're a public company. Correct. Hence the definition public of public. public company means you can buy stock in it. Publicly traded on the stock market. You can buy privately if you go through private equity and iBanking. Right. The other deep level is they've publicly let you know the minority owners who are minorities. We've talked about it on the show all the time. Right. So, but they never announced who are the majority owners. They have. Dana White and his partner owner. Ari. Ari Emanuel. I almost said Ari Shafir and I was like, dude, and that's even not now, his name. That's a comedian. And even now <laughs> they just did a, a $1 billion equity infusion. So they open up enough stocks and more people will... So they can allow more partners in. They sold more stock. But it has to be people with buku I, cash yeah, because what's a billion? it's not right. public. Right, because I'll let you know. I ain't got a coffee can full of billion in my backyard. Right. I can't, you can't get that from Coinstar. <laughs> but yes. But rather than thinking about it as a one or two people with buku cash, think about it as mm, a million people with 10,000. Well, but that's what I'm saying. You have to have enough to be able to even get to the table. Yeah, but... Because it's not... Correct, but you could easily... If you have a 401k or portfolio or investing, you have a bunch of people saying, this is a good investment. You should WME. This is good. Right? And it is good because now they're going to come, like you said, with Zufa Boxing. Right. They're expanding. Uh, my- and everything's on Fight Pass now, so oh. I'm sure they have... I'm pretty sure they'll sell this brand to uh, to Disney in about five years. You think Disney? Because ESPN is Disney. I think they're just building more infrastructure and then they move out of the way. So when does it get to a point where Disney is uh, monopolizing the? Because it's like they're just great buying everything. question. Star Wars, Marvel, like you know what I mean? ESPN. That's a great question. So are they monopolizing? It's because they, they're going in different sections, that's why? Right. They're different oh. industries, so they're not controlling the only means of production. You remember like very, very interesting. Remember like fifteen years ago where we could only get cable from one provider in the Bay Area? Yeah. And they no matter what they did, they would treat us a certain way. All right. That's a monopoly. We didn't have the fair market con- conditions to say, okay, if you don't treat me right, right? It was the same cats that you were talking about. Oh, all these stations battling, and then you go to visit, and it's like each one has a floor. Clear channel. Straight up. So it's like we never had that ability to go, you know, again, for us, with food. You don't want to treat me right here? I'm going to go get chicken across the street. Right? So that, when you have it, when they control one area and you can't get other options, that's a monopoly. Okay. So it's because they're spreading their thing out wide that... It's like, oh, we're just going to gobble. The, yeah. But and, they're gobbling up the best of the best. On and to be honest, I, you know, I just read an article today that they're struggling to, kid, they're struggling to get young people to buy into the Star Wars brand. Who knows how long that's going to last? You know what I mean? Right. It's because they took something great and made it 
hey, now we're just going to put it out every year. And it's like, okay, now you watered it down. Man, that's a whole other conversation. I wonder at a certain point if it's kind of like the lesson learned to Apple. You can make one product that's so great that it makes your older products or different products look ungreat. And I think they cannibalized it, right? Right. I mean, was it the iPod Nano? (laughs) Ate, Ate the iPod alive, right? Yeah. So I wonder, like I said to you when we first saw it, I said... Why do I need to see Star Wars? When we left Guardians of the Galaxy, I said, why do I need to see Star Wars? I never knew I could watch people fight in space and laugh my, my butt off. Right. So what is in for Star Wars? And then Star Wars got that, you know, fake woke. <gasps> I'm not the Jedi I thought I was. <laughs> it's amazing to me. People would drive around with like Stormtrooper stuff on their car. Right. And then also be like having stuff on a car like impeach. How are you gonna root for the emperor and be <laughs> mad about the president? <laughs> but that's you know, these are the same people as we talk about. They speed through the neighborhood talking about baby on board, run over a baby at the same time. Keep going. Keep going. Bang. Shit men cross my street. Yeah. It doesn't matter, it's okay. You know. Oh well. That was just an ambiguous accent. I wasn't picking on anybody <laughs> other than myself. Um, this was a great podcast. We're going to be back soon. Um, we might be uh, tweeting tomorrow on you guys. Tweeting about the Shevanko fight in my backyard. Now I got it. I got the screen set up. You got it. Oh, nice. oh, yeah. It's on now. Double D scene. I got, I got the little. I'm really. I'm getting black in my old age. I am turning to pops from uh, Friday. I got the screen. <laughs> We got our own drive-in. Now we just got to get little dirt bikes to ride in. We got our own drive-in. It'd be like Goonies. Um, just don't turn into granddad. Man. <laughs> we got to talk, talk about that guy in a minute. Um, I am the sweet MBA. I am joined by... Brain damage. Everything is brought to you here by Dream Air Productions. Um, don't forget, Among the Veils, urban sci-fi, sword fantasy. You should check it out because we was first... Uh, we'll have this up for you. More content coming next month. Cannot wait to show you all these new fights that are coming. Um, and without further ado, chill! Ha ha! All right, all right.